the screen is all yours, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope it's been a great school day today. For some of you, it may be just starting of the school after vacation. Some of you, it was just a regular day, starting of the week. So uh, next slide, sir. Since we are going to talk about classroom management, and this is officially my first interaction with you, I thought I would like to break the ice with you with a small bingo game. You might actually know this as uh, housey for some of you. Maybe that is the context. So um, I'm just putting a link on the chat. If you could just follow the link, you will see uh, an entire grid with 25 prompts given to you. And there you will see uh, there are various experiences. So whether you have experienced these things in the past or are presently experiencing them if you just click on it uh, click on a particular experience it will cross it out so let's see who finishes a line first so this could be vertically horizontally diagonally let's see let's make it a competition please follow the link i will also do it with you i've pasted the link on the chat mm -hmm. I hope everyone is following the link and busy doing their uh, bingo. Sure, I can explain the game again. So basically, there are various, uh, no problem, no problem. Um, so for anybody who just joined, there's a link on the chat. If you click on the link, you will uh, be taken to this bingo game. All you have to do is read. There are 25 cards there. Read the card. And if you've experienced that particular thing mentioned on the card, click on it it'll cross out that card. It's like how we play the housey game. It's the same thing. Um, and as soon as you complete a line, you can tell me and let's see who wins. So we'll probably, I have put a link. Maybe you joined after I put, I'll uh, share the link again. I've shared the link once again, just in case. Nidhi, ma'am, hope it's clear. And Sudha, ma'am, I hope you got the link now. Okay. Wow. 
Abhirami, ma'am. Yes, you finished one line. Very good. Could you share? Would you like to share anything that stood out? Not the entire line, maybe, but a particular uh, experience that kind of stood out to you. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, please share. One second. Uh, that that line is about. Uh, I have to open the link. That's okay. Uh, anything that just stood out to you, you remember, oh, this was something different or anything? No. Uh, 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 the conducted a lesson with uh, zero interruptions. That happens in kindergarten classroom when the students are more involved with the topic that we are teaching. That's a great uh, thing because usually kindergarten are the students we kind of are more concerned with because it's difficult to explain to them. I'm, I'm so glad that you have had that experience. Even contradiction is also there. Sometimes they don't listen. If they, if they <laughs> don't understand or if they don't like, if their mind is so wavery, then they don't listen. True, true. Absolutely so, true. So, yeah. Anybody else who wants to share anything? Okay, I think there are a few people who have joined a little late. So that may be the reason uh, there's a little lit less interaction, but it's okay. We will move on. The point of this exercise was to kind of understand that in general, we often think of, uh, you know, classroom management as some special skill. But if you think about it, we are all sailing in the same boat. There is nobody, I think, who has had none of those experiences. We are all sailing in the same boat. And to be fair, nobody has a foolproof, some magic potion that will make your classroom management flawless. But by the end of our session today, I intend to achieve a few things. So next slide. I want to equip you with varied practical classroom management strategies. I want to create an interactive environment where we will share and learn from each other. Hopefully we will share more than we did in the icebreaker session. And I do want to provide tools and techniques to create the culture of learning facilitation in the school. Now, before starting the session, I would like to set the ground rules. Next slide, sir. First rule. Next, sir. I want you all to participate actively. So there are a few people who spoke. There were a few people who sent a message on the chat. Either way is okay with me. Second, I want you to minimize distractions. So unless you are actually speaking, please mute yourself. We don't want any background disturbances. Third, we do encourage diversity of experience. So it is not only for our students, it's for us as well. So we can disagree, but we need to disagree respectfully and finally stay on the topic we did, do tend to take tangents sometimes and they're fun but everyone's time is important so hope that is all clear all right moving on sir next slide to start the session i have a story to share with you so it was my first job ever as a teacher. I was fresh out of B.A. and I had this notion that I know everything that there is to know about the latest developments in education and child psychology and everything. And at that time, uh, toward the middle of the school year, there was a bal mela going on in school. So children did have a lot of art and craft material with them throughout the day. Obviously, they were not supposed to play with that during the academic classes, but you know how sincerely children follow the rules, right? So there was this one girl who was busy making some paper quilling spirals while I was trying to teach her English. And uh, I first put it, put it away. Then I told her nicely. Then I told her strictly, nothing seemed to work. So finally, I said, okay, I give up. And I asked her for her diary and I wrote a note in her diary. The idea was probably in my head that her parents will talk to her and that will correct her behavior. And that's, that's how it's supposed to work because that's all I had seen probably as a student myself. So 
the class was over i came out and by chance the academic coordinator of the school was passing by so i just shared with her what had happened and immediately she said what is done is done but next time for classroom management issues don't send a diary note and i i had a quizzical look on my face i said what do you mean so what she told me that day it has remained a holy grail for me as a teacher she said if a child is not paying attention in class that is your deficit as a teacher not the child's that day that statement really hurt me it hurt my ego because there are 30 children in class and only one wasn't paying attention how is that my fault it must be that child's fault um and i actually asked her i questioned her on this and she said that means your teaching learning method was not engaging enough to involve her so you need to make it more inclusive and i did feel bad at that time but i'm somebody who likes to introspect and over time i think i i agree completely with her it is your responsibility as a teacher to you know make sure that this does not happen so my take away from that particular incident was one classroom management is the teacher's responsibility second don't bring ego into the equation and third adopt a solution oriented approach not about so the solution oriented approach not being oh let me just send a message to the parents and forget about it but actually how do i make sure that i involve this child in my teaching learning so uh, so next so whatever i have learned throughout my years uh, as a teacher whether by learning from others whether by learning in Now, through trial and error i would like to share with you today and uh, i know there will be a lot of people who have way more experience than me so let's make it a sharing session more than anything else so um, here i would like to ask you we often talk about a positive classroom environment when we say classroom management that's what we want right a positive classroom environment so there are two pictures i've given you one on the right one on the left which of these do you think is a positive classroom environment i think second one ma'am so second the one, one on the right yes on the right where they are smiling on the right because they are paying full attention to the teacher. person who is standing at the front okay there's somebody else who said it's the first one i'm sorry i missed your name first means right right side second one uh, no no uh, on the chat uh, okay. deva kumari um so uh, there is one only one person saying the first one most others are saying the second one okay actually i would say either of them could be a positive classroom environment now let me propose something to you what if the um task given by the teacher the task assigned by the teacher is a group discussion in that case which of these is a positive classroom environment the first picture then correct first one ma'am correct so it depends on the classroom remember a positive classroom environment does not essentially mean a quiet classroom it does not mean a classroom where all the children are looking at the teacher it means a classroom where there is there are two main things only two things we are looking for one involvement so whatever it is that the teacher is doing there should be involvement of the students and second generally speaking it should be conducive to learning whatever the teaching learning method might be so how can we achieve this a conducive classroom environment to teaching learning and an environment where children are involved in the teaching learning <coughs> sorry let's start with the basics um, so can you go to the next one please you remember i said the ground rules for you 
so you have to do the same thing for your students as well there are some expectations that you need to set at the beginning of the year so next so coming to set could you please mute yourself वो बोले कि तू इसको ले जाता खाना खाने के लिए तो वो आए तो तू गाड़ी करके बंद करके अंदर कितनी आवाज लगाई फिर हमको लगा तेरी चाय नहीं है यू म्यूटेड एवरीवन बट ओके अम्म सो व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट सेटिंग द ग्राउंड रूल्स लाइक आई सेट द ग्राउंड रूल्स फॉर यू एट द बिगिनिंग सिमिलर I said everybody should mute themselves, but uh, there was some background sound. So there's nothing wrong in saying again that uh, let's all mute ourselves, right? It's the same thing. Set expectations at the beginning of the school year for the students, but revise periodically as well. These are not machines; they are children. It's not like you gave an instruction, press enter, and then now throughout the year they are going to do it perfectly. It's not going to work like that. don't spring things on them at the last moment but at the same time be give that leeway make sure that you allow for some mistakes where then they change themselves as well and finally for older students you can always explain the reasoning behind the rules because that way you're not just telling them do it because i say so you are actually telling them why they need to do a certain thing um can you tell me why this is effective with older kids and not with younger ones why should we explain the reasoning for a certain rule only for the older kids mostly maturity yes because the younger ones are not mature enough to understand anything else uh we will talk about this a little more in detail in the next session but um basically there's also the fact that younger children um often times the rules that we set for them uh, especially when it comes to safety those are rules that they need to follow whether they like it or not so there's no point explaining those things to them it's better that we just tell them you have to do it because i say so for certain things okay coming to consistency of consequences see um remember we set the expectations but then if those expectations are not met what happens then what are the rewards what are the punishments make sure that you discuss this at the beginning itself it cl creates clarity but then also stick to what you said otherwise there is this notion that oh the teacher keeps saying but she doesn't really follow through with whatever she says so remember consequences when i say should be directly related to the actions not to the student often times we see teachers kind of being partial towards certain students because they are be better at academics or something like that please don't do that misbehavior is misbehavior and also remember punish the action not the child don't start uh, having a you know preconceived notion about the child this creates fairness so now we'll talk about what are those strategies we talked about setting the ground rules consistency of consequences so what are those consequences what are those strategies that we need to keep in mind so next slide at first i will pass the task on to you i'll give you 5 minutes to come up with a list of acceptable classroom management strategies the right reinforcement um this these will be strategies for the children that you teach whatever age it is that you are teaching we will um, i want you to i'll give you 5 minutes it is uh, 722 now i'll start uh, at 727 i i'm giving you 5 entire minutes i want you to come up with at least 3 to 5 strategies that you use for your children for your age level for your particular set of students as well to help them learn better
are in class. After that, we will discuss stage wise. I can still see a few teachers joining in. Um, yeah, somebody said mind map. We'll discuss stage wise, and at that time you can share with me. Uh, which age are you talking about the mind map? Hands on activities. Yeah, we'll discuss stage wise. That time you can tell me, because otherwise it will become all mixed up. For anybody who has just joined, we are just taking some time to come up with a group, uh, sorry, uh, a set of classroom management strategies that work for children of the age that you teach. Mind map for grade 10. Engagement, interest, art integration, great. Storytelling, yes. I think most of you are actually talking about uh, one basic theme, which is variety in your teaching learning methods. Group discussions, online tools, quizzes. Absolutely, makes sense. So oh, grammar through song, great. Again, a variety in teaching learning method, making sure that everybody is included in your teaching learning. Great. Relating the topic to nature and daily life examples. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, I think you've all come up with great ideas. Now let's discuss this. So basically, uh, like I was saying, none of you are new to teaching, correct? So you, you have your own uh, classroom management strategies. More than anything else, um, Yes, going outside and showing nature will make sense. So more than anything else, what we'll do is consolidate all of our knowledge into this structure so that we know why we are doing a certain thing, not just doing it for doing sake. Correct? That's the idea we are going with. Um, sir, five minutes are done. So I'm going to be <laughs> consistent with consequences. So we are going on to the... Uh, first stage which is the foundational stage so my foundational stage teachers can you share some things i think some of them talked about um somewhere uh, there was storytelling which would be a foundational stage activity anything else um going out to nature will be hands-on activity will be foundational stage acronyms for yeah yeah absolutely that will be for a later age. We are talking about foundational stage right now. So uh, there are various different strategies, but if if you have to remember them kind of, there are five main categories I've kind of um, divided them into. So the first is more than anything else, routine and structure. So uh, there is this thing, it's kind of a controversial thing to say, but 
my mother often says that at this stage, at the foundational stage, um, teaching children is like training animals. You have to come continuously, repeatedly tell them the same thing over and over again till it becomes like a Pavlo Pavlovian response. And how you can do that is you have to establish a consistent daily schedule. Simple transitions, you know, visual cards. Um, oh, now break time. So water time. So everybody is going to go drink water, washroom break. Everybody will go have a washroom break. And once they come back, they are now sitting because now nothing else is going on in their mind. Correct. So those kind of routine structure things are very important. Next, positive reinforcement. Now you have to reinforce their actions positively. So I'm sure uh, my foundational stage teachers know all about this way better than I do. Things like stickers, stars, children. Yes, flashcards and exit cards is exactly what I was talking about when I was talking about uh, routines and structures. Very good. Uh, flashcards even can be used for positive reinforcement. You know, uh, you don't have to interrupt what you were saying. Just pick up a flashcard and that itself uh, tells them often what you need to tell them. Third is engagement through play. Now, whether you are following the Waldorf method, the Playway method, the uh, Montessori method, we all know that children at this stage will only engage through play. So, like you were saying, storytelling or um, engagement to nature and art integration, all of these things help to maintain focus and reduce any disruptions. Next is simple visual rules. So don't make... Circle time rules. also, I think. Circle time, yes, yes. Um, circle time here will be of a slightly different nature than um, for, for older kids, right? Um, hmm. So... Yes, exactly. Um, so we need to be clear from the start. We kind of set certain rules. You know, you must have all seen these visual cue cards, hands, and then it says, keep your hands to yourself or eyes. And it says eyes on the teacher. Correct. Things like that. Simple visual cues because children at this age, they really can't read most uh mostly up to the towards the end of the foundational stages where they start reading very fluently so uh, simple visual rules instead of making it complicated for them and clear communication we need to use calm direct voice and repetition it's very important repeat yourself and be calm don't uh, children at this age also tend to scare very easily so don't use a loud voice you can use a firm voice but not a loud voice so um this is about foundational stage i think most of the things that um, you all also mentioned i kind of covered within this moving on to the preparatory stage they can understand better so we can kind of adjust our teaching learning methods and hear a lot of what you were uh, suggesting will come, which is accommodation of varied learning styles. Here, we are basically trying to do what I probably did not achieve with that girl in the story I was telling you, right? They are now not just playing. So we need to accommodate all kinds of varied learning styles. So here, if you remember, um, if uh, some of you may be going through the chat to talk, uh, like to see what others are suggesting. So hands-on activities, uh, which by the way, there will be a lot of overlap as well. So keeping that in mind, uh, hands-on activities on um, um, online tools, maybe not that useful yet, but group discussions, um, engagement through art integration, songs, going out and showing nature, stories, Stories, again, foundational stage also, it will be useful. I think I missed that mes uh, message about the stories earlier. All of these will help to make sure that no matter what the child's learning style is, we have accommodated those. Next, coming to student-involved rulemaking. Why do you think this is important? Why involve them? We can make the rules ourselves. Why do you think it is important to involve the students in rulemaking? Anyone?
basically what happens is if um, a lot of you might be to own responsibility sincerely very good exactly what i was looking for correct what happens is um you know a, a lot of you might be parents here and you might have noticed you know if the child has helped you out in cooking something they are more likely to eat it it's kind of the same trick that we are using here that if the child has um been a part of the rule making even in a tiny way they learn that okay i made this rule for myself so i should stick to it and they will learn accountability they will learn responsibility this is the stage where we introduce uh, the concept of becoming independent right um when they set the rules sometimes they might actually suggest some rules because they have had enough experience in the past years they might suggest some rules that you might have overlooked so that is also a great way of coming up with things next coming to consistency of consequences i think we've discussed this already um and this is the stage where they will start observing if you're not being consistent at the foundational stage i think they are not that aware of these things but at this stage they'll be very aware and they will observe they might not question you because they still that relationship is of a different kind but uh, they will observe so we need to be first of all we need to be consistent because that's the right thing to do but also we need to be consistent so that they kind of build, we are building a level of trust in them now coming to positive group reinforcement now uh, some of the foundational stage teachers might have noticed that at that age the foundational stage the one before this children kind of play next to each other but not really with each other so here when we are talking about positive group reinforcement we are talking about that only in the preparatory stage because that group cohesiveness has now set in so now they want to do things with each other and they have that sense of oh we are all a group together and we want to encourage that so uh, group re reinforcement makes a huge difference setting small challenges something like you know at the end of the day who will be ready with uh, their bags and ready to go home first whichever row uh does it first will get a star make one star for the entire year but they'll be so happy doing that even something as simple as you know um this house was the first to get ready with, uh, with their books and pencil boxes out before the teacher came it really makes a huge difference coming to uh the next part encouraging responsibility i already touched upon this make sure that you don't spoon feed let students do things on their own that they can do on their own can you suggest a few things that they can do on their own some things that we should leave out to them as you're thinking about this please also put in some ideas for the middle stage projects yes certain simple projects for of course age wise you can give it to them um even something as simple as you know uh before the teacher comes erasing the board uh projects assignments those are the obvious ones but the reason i'm so a lot uh, some teachers might feel that oh that's just you know uh clean the plate award great that's a great great idea especially with children nowadays not eating all the parents complaining yes that's a great idea and this creates a sense of responsibility in in them and honestly it takes the work off you but more importantly it creates a uh, an independent child at the end of the day that's what we want right we don't want somebody who's just dependent on you without you they cannot do anything we have this rule for parenting right that uh, we will always be there for our children but we want to prepare them as if we are not going to be there for there for them tomorrow so that's the same rule for us as teachers as well now coming to the middle stage next sir now usually towards the uh, middle 
it's towards the secondary stage where they start challenging you. Uh, soundometer for the classroom. Yes, great idea. That's a great idea. I had never thought of that. I'm so happy to hear new ideas from you as well. So uh, from the middle stage itself, you need to start setting boundaries so that there wouldn't be any confusion. If you think about it, um, that will help explain to them that these are the rules that are non-negotiable. And when that happens, you don't need to then keep, you know, pestering them for basic things then. So we need to set boundaries and stick to them. Don't make promises that you cannot keep. Don't give threats that you cannot actually follow through with. Um, fostering autonomy. Uh, a lot of these will be repeated because those are at a different age. So earlier we were talking about responsibility. Those are very basic responsibilities. Autonomy would be, you know, if there's a project, for example, instead of telling them, oh, you will do this project as group. It's a group project or an individual project. Wherever it is possible, let them choose. They're still doing the project. So how do they want to do it? In pairs, in groups, in as individuals? Be transparent about what is possible to leave up to them, but foster that autonomy. They feel that sense of pride that we, like I chose this. So now I cannot say, I, oh, ma'am, I did not finish on time. You decided how to do it, right? Um, so coming to next peer mediation. So when I talk about peer mediation, here we are not talking about... Um, you know, them snitching on each other. That's not what we are talking about. Here, you could give them some sense of, so this will kind, if you've done everything till now correctly, this will happen organically, where there will be some of those extra responsible children in school, where they will, you know, once this happened in my class, where um, I was teaching something, and one of the students was just turning to uh, his bench partner to say something, and the partner just said, as in, you know, we'll talk about it later. And if you think about it, that's a very simple, very small uh, picture of peer mediation, whether I did not have to say that don't talk in class, don't talk while the teacher is explaining. They became responsible on their own. Correct. And that is a great thing for it to happen. And you can encourage this through circle time activities where you talk about these things, but it will I believe happen on its own as well if we are able to do everything that we talked about before this perfectly. Again, coming to consistency, I will consistently talk about consistency. We need to be consistent with whatever it is that we have told them. Um, next, emotional regulation. Now, this is the age. This is not adolescence yet, but it is still the age where they are a little confused about their emotions. Correct. Um, and if you think about it, us as teachers sometimes do tend to get annoyed with things. So keeping that in mind, um, it is okay for us to give them a little leeway, but that emotional regulation needs to happen through our mediation and through helping them. For this, uh, and for the next point in the secondary stage, which is mutual respect, I have a few books that I will suggest you can share with them. Um, and that I will put them at the uh, on the chat at the end of the class. Please remind me in case I forget. Um, these will help you a great deal. Stories, books, these are things that Circle Time helps uh, as well uh, to a great, great extent. And, you know, if you see some kind of emotional uh, regulation, acknowledge that, appreciate that as well. That also helps a great deal. Okay, coming to the secondary stage, um, we are kind of running out of time. So we, I'll go a little fast. If there is something that you are not understanding, please let me know. Uh, the secondary stage, we will talk about mutual respect. So here we are not only talking about emotional reg regulation for yourself, but respect for your peers as well. Again, it will help a great deal with talking to them, counseling them. Counseling will also play a great deal in goal setting. At the, uh, at the beginning of the year, if the goals have been set for them, they know what they're working towards. Then you need not 
keep telling them to focus on a certain thing especially these are ninth graders and above so i think they are smart enough to know what they should be doing at this stage so that's this is the perfect time to goal set with them and make them responsible for their own goals next reflective behavior management so when we talk about reflective behavior management here we are talking about um you know sometimes these children at this age kind of start challenging you um you're not supposed to write on walls they will write on walls you're not supposed to play ball in class they will do it so these kind of behaviors you need to do two things um i would like to focus on these two things one is explain to them or talk to them and make sure that they understand why what they did is wrong number one second basically correct their wrong behavior in the sense that if they have hurt somebody make them apologize explain it to them but after that make sure that they go and apologize to the person that they have hurt it could be physical altercation it could be an emotional hurt whatever it is make sure that they do apologize if it's something as simple as drawing on the walls make them paint it out paint over it with school permission of course but this kind of you know reflective behavior they've reflected on what they did and then they have corrected that behavior that helps a great deal because remember we are creating future citizens we need to make sure that they have this ability to you know correct their behavior it's okay to make a mistake but it's not okay to imagine that this is all right there's nothing wrong with this mistake next talking about leadership opportunities here we are not only talking about having one monitor throughout the year here we are talking about giving them smaller opportunities even something as simple as you know mentoring school uh, students who are younger than them it gives them a sense of responsibility it's almost like oh if i am not perfect they they are now looking up at me you know looking up to me sorry and that makes a huge difference um here last one technology management here you can kind of um rope in parents for uh, help so especially i'm i have put this specially for uh, online classes what are they doing during the online classes because there are still some schools which have certain days where there there are technically holidays but there are online classes so are they paying attention do they have other tabs open i think uh, to a great extent you need to talk to parents about this we'll talk about how to do that but also set the rules clearly from the beginning so that there is no confusion so that later they can't say oh i don't know <laughs> correct uh, so next this is the entire all stages classroom management strategies the some of the classroom management strategies that you specified will fall under this somewhere and we already discussed those uh, you can take a screenshot if you like and we can move on so often we think i hope everyone's done so next so often we think that parents are that x factor you know that influence your classroom from outside so in order to make sure that we are building bridges there are four basic steps it's very simple actually one engage have open communication and listen actively they will have some very wise things to say don't listen for the sake of listening second educate like you expect to put the expectations clearly for your students put it clearly for your parents as well and make sure that there is regular engagement so that they know what is going on in school third um i will share the previous page at the end of the uh, session once again third document so anecdotal records will come under this maintain records so that the parents are not left in the dark and maintain consistency as well within the documentation don't be the teacher who's sitting on the last day and you know quickly writing out all the anecdotes you will not remember it's just not possible and finally collaborate share goals and the goals that we were talking about goal setting share your goals so that your goals are aligning with theirs and adopt a solution oriented approach again don't think of it as 
oh god this is one task i have to do you know interacting with parents think of it as a solution that they might actually have solutions for you um next sir so when we think of partnering with parents as a collaboration rather than confrontation it is very easy don't make it a ptm to ptm thing and then parents will be on your side they will be one more tool for you to help with classroom management rather than a hindrance saying that oh why was my child sent home after coming to school late for 5 days straight correct set the expectations it will be very easy next now we talked about students we talked about parents the only people left is us teachers we are talking about classroom management but in the classroom there are two categories of people the learners and the teachers so let's talk about teachers teachers as teachers we need to lead by example we need to stay cool if we are losing our cool as soon as one child is speaking up we are setting the tone for the classroom if there is emotional regulation within us there will not be any escalation so i am not saying children will become saints but whatever disruptive behavior has happened it will remain there it won't escalate further next if you stay strong you will teach long so practicing emotional regulation helps teachers manage this daily stress there is daily stress let's accept it but it will prevent burnout and it will enhance our overall well being as well i have a small task for you sir next very quickly if someone can just share something uh, an incident that happened uh, sir next that uh, happened in school where i want you to think of recall a situation where you faced an emotional challenge review your reaction what did you do what did you feel how did you how did it impact the class and finally observe the positives and work on the improvement so what what worked what did not work and if you know you kind of can think okay maybe i could have done this differently i would like just anybody one person even if they share something like this it would be great anyone okay uh this can be a little bit of a touchy topic uh, so maybe even if you don't want to share i do want you to do this as a regular activity at the end of the day sit down for 5 minutes and think about one thing that you did well when it came to classroom management and one thing that you could have improved the in, see we tell our students the same thing uh, applies to us that it's okay to make mistakes but we can't make the same mistakes over and over again sometimes i have also lost my cool and yelled at a child but then i felt bad about it i did not do that ever again i gave that note i never gave classroom management related notes ever again so those kind of changes should occur in us gradually and as like we live we learn there's nothing wrong in doing that so uh, so next um making line monitors to assist you yes those are uh, reflect like um, i think that will also help with your kind of uh, <laughs> peace of mind okay hopefully if uh, at least for the people who have attended the entire session these are the four things that we did one we talked about what is positive classroom environment two things it has to be conducive to learning it depends on the teaching learning method so it has to be conducive to learning and it has to be an involved classroom second uh, classroom management strategies clear ground rules should be set and whatever the strategies are we have a ton of strategies some 20 strategies i shared with you uh, but within that you have to consistently follow the consequences of whatever the rules they are that you have set third coming to parent collaboration engage with them educate them 
document whatever is happening in class and collaborate with them so that it becomes a um a, a nice cohesive community because after all we are all working towards the same goal the children are our goal right and finally teacher self care model emotional regulation and practice self reflection for yourself is this clear are there any doubts okay um yes no all right so if there are no doubts i want you uh, to now who uh, hopefully mute your, uh, unmute yourself and, and there is a quiz quick quiz five questions i will not read the question i want you to read the question and just answer a b c d there are uh, sir can you please go to the next one quick quiz to see if you really learned yes quickly either put it on the chat or uh, shout out the answer a b c or d b involved yes. class b. involved class correct, involved. correct. B. b yes uh, i think venkat sir was the first one no mr tarang choudhury was the first one to answer very good next one sir we'll go a little quick now what is the benefit of involving students in rule setting at the preparatory stage c e. i think nupur ma'am was the first one to answer e. c e. yes c e. very good very good next c it is next how can teachers collaborate with parents effectively in classroom management d d involving parents as partners in teaching consistent behavior expectations d. yes it's d d d very good very good d. who is the first one let's let's make that a the thing who is the first one to answer pooja aurora oh. and i think somebody else also answered before oh, yeah orly <laughs> Okay, what is the purpose of using reflective behavior management in this uh, classroom? B exactly. B. B. Correct. B. Uma ma'am was the first one to answer, I believe. No, Swarna. Next. Last question. I want a new name now. Why is emotional regulation important for teachers in classroom management? <laughs> um c it is a actually i think uh, this one i would like to address a lot of people said c that is a um you know a, a result but that is not the main aim that's not why it is important it is important for make sure, making sure we are calm we are consistent and we don't kind of um, you know add to the disruption that's the reason why we are doing it as a result we'll be able to multitask better that's a good positive but that's not the reason why we are doing it that's the only difference so with that i have come to an end uh, of the session thank you um i will put the names of the books in the chat meanwhile sir could you please go back to that uh, slide um i'll tell you the slide number slide number 11 uh there there was i think uma ma'am wanted to see the slide again meanwhile i'll put the book names in the chat Yes, the eleventh one. Anybody who wanted to take a screenshot can do so now. And here are the book names. Ah, uh, the book names I have put in order of the most basic, simple ones, which you can use even for little children, to the more complicated ones. 
for older children i think uh, they will kind of choose on their own and it's better for, uh, with counseling rather than really reading books for them because they are old enough to do that on their own but circle time and you can sometimes just read these books for circle time with younger kids and it it helps a lot yeah so i request uh, the participants to come forward as to give your uh, feedback to the uh, resource person uh, it was definitely a wonderful session like many of them are mentioning it was an eye opener uh, especially as the resource person has specified about uh, you know like uh, foundation stage middle stage and secondary stage and all it was really informative at the same time eye opening at the same time i should say you know like uh, uh, lots of inputs which most of us were not aware of so i really appreciate the method uh, which uh, the resource person mrs ayer has followed as to create awareness about classroom management among the uh, people today and i request uh, our dear participants to come forward and give your uh, feedback to the uh you know like resource person okay uh, uma ma'am i think wanted a feedback form you can just share with us uh, is that okay sir uh we don't have a feedback form as such because what's happening is we have been observing everyone are just putting yes 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 rather we appreciate if people talk about what they liked about the session reinforcement for us punita ma'am <laughs> punita ma'am that would be really great if you can speak about it punita ma'am yes sir yes ma'am yeah actually i am not at home i am uh, in chandigarh at okay. present so from there i am connected but uh, really liked the way she presented the things and many new concepts were, got cleared because of her explanation <laughs> thank you so much nice nice thank man you. thank you yeah thank you thank you so much ma'am anyone else who would like to share your uh, uh, what to be say like uh, feedback with us that would be really appreciated and it would be really great so this is a very good session um so many things which we were already aware of and we use in our class but the things now has have been organized in our mind the things when and how these should be used the way uh, unorganized thoughts now become organized i can say when to and how to use this ma'am one thing you said that the action should be punished not the child i am fully agree with this point i want to share one incident that happened in our school as i am taking senior classes one of the <laughs> student managed however to use mobile phone to answer right oh. yes and it was a senior student although it was just a kiddish you know kiddish activity because the student belonged to a board class and there was no use of that paper no marks are going to uh, calculate anywhere but it was just a kid so uh, so made a mistake so how this action should be punished and not the child so here um, again i think here a great thing would be to obviously i am sure you did this where you involve the parents as well and they need to understand so here the the consequences will be there but when i say action should be punished not the child what i mean by that is that that you make it very clear that you did this so you are being punished it's not like i don't like you and that's why you're being punished that's the difference i'm talking about yeah I, the same thing we do because uh, this is an old saying that shama badan ko chahiye chhotan ko utpat तो हम इस थॉट के साथ ही क्लास में जाते हैं 
ki they are we are dealing with the small stu uh, student whether they belong to secondary uh, level or primary or senior secondary but they are children so correct. we have to tackle them with that correct correct um may i may i suggest sure sure ma'am we can uh, confiscate their uh, mobile phone for one or two days and uh, hand over to the parents that i'm assuming app ha will happen right uh, mm -hmm. did did it not happen yeah this happened that's a standard uh, ha that is <laughs> actually the senior student become so much they are sensitive also no they themselves fear with that that somebody will like they will feel insults when they come to school that other children will bully them about this this is the problem but, uh, but i think uh, to uh, one thing that you could do with them is uh, also now it's done and dusted but just in the future one thing you could do with them is before you tell them what you're going to do actually ask them what do you think should be done why do you think it is wrong and what do you think should be done yes ma'am because yes. that helps them take responsibility thank you ma'am yeah uh, so here we are coming to an end uh, with uh, you know uh, about today's uh, session and as you all know the process of collecting the certificate is uh, that i'll be sharing a number here that is 99 9098925730 so this is my number uh, as you all know our webinars are free anyone can join but certificate costs so you people have to share rupees 50 towards the certificate if you want to take a certificate for the session and uh, after how are you supposed to send this 50 rupees e either you can do phone pay google pay or uh, paytm after that kindly send the screenshot of your payment to the same number along with your complete name if you are concerned about miss mrs mr along with that you have to i have written the number in the chat box kindly check it 9098925730 yes i have written it in the chat box kindly check it after doing the payment send it along with the um what to be say just a second everyone yeah Double nine zero eight nine two five seven three zero. Now I have sent. Yeah. So along with your name, kindly send a screenshot. The same number within twenty four hours. Kindly listen to me. Within twenty four hours, if possible, by tomorrow morning you will be getting the certificate, or else by tomorrow evening you will be getting your certificates to your WhatsApp. So this is how you need to get your uh, certificates. and also we have an ongoing course which has started the people who wish to become trainers like mrs jyoti or we have other resource persons also with us the people who wish to become resource persons in future you can um enroll for our train the trainers course which is uh, of one month long and it is scheduled on every monday wednesday and saturday uh, evening uh, from 8:30 to 9:30 those who wish to join for this course can text me i will share you the details and fee for the certificate is 50 rupees so thank you one and all that's all for today we will meet in the upcoming session thank you